uh, may Allah's peace and blessing be upon him and uh, uh, he's one of the great companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as we all know and that one of the ten heaven bound companions and his son-in-law they made him after they made him a prophet the Shia first said that the prophethood was going to Ali and angel Gabriel made a mistake and he handed over to Muhammad in his state then these guys the Allah said no 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 Ali is not even a prophet he was a god and they said he contained the traits of both human traits and divine traits and that's why this is very interesting you may hear this for the first time. Hmm. You know the name of the person who assassinated Ali ibn Abi Talib. May, Allah's be ple may Allah be pleased with him. The, that person's name is Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim. Hmm. So he's a kafir. Yes. Right? Who killed Ali ibn Abi Talib. The Alawis actually praise and celebrate and commemorate the remembrance of Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim. Why? Look at this myth. They say that because he managed to separate an nasut from Allahut, because Ali maintained both human traits and divine traits. Mm -hmm. So by killing the human part of him, he was now purely God. God. Mm -hmm. So later on, his descendants and his followers, a person by the name just last century in in Syria. A person by the name Muhammad al-Tawil said, well, Ali was God and I'm God too. So he claimed the Lordship. This is the, the evil history of the Alawi sect. Because some people may say that there is no difference between us and them. They're Muslims too. And they have mosques and they have masajid and they pray. This is not true at all. These guys are not just kuffar. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on him. Judge them as there are more uh, in, in Kufr and disbelief, they're worse than the regular Kufar who were born in Kufr. Worse than fire worshippers. Worse than the enemies of Islam. Because this is what they call it, the enemy within. Uh, then his son, by the name Sulaiman, Muhammad Tawil's son, last century. Uh, he too, he claimed that he was uh, a god. He's the Ilah. Both were executed. Then their grandson, and so on. These guys, uh, even though they are minority, they're not even 10% of mm. the Syrian population. They control the country. I want to ask you about that. I want to ask you how such a small minority in, in, uh, in Syria, which is a Muslim majority country, came to power. But let's take Brother Muhammad from Sudan sure. first. Brother Muhammad, as alaykum. alaykum, Brother Muhammad. It appears that uh, we're having uh, problems with the line. Mm -hmm. Brother Muhammad, please try to give us a call back, inshallah, and uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts uh, about Syria, inshallah. How, how did such a small group of people, who are 10% of the population, come about to be in power for such a long time? Uh, always ask about the interest of uh, other countries, mm -hmm. particularly what is called so-called superpower, uh, in addition to the neighboring countries. If you remember... Uh, a very high-ranking officer in the Israeli cabinet said that uh, uh, we have to support Al-Assad's regime all the way because if he collapsed, that would be the beginning of the end of the state of Israel. Mm -hmm. When we analyze and examine this statement, it was not made haphazardly. It is absolutely true. Why? He was warning the West, the US, Europe, the NATO, that do not make the same mistake as he did by supporting the Egyptian revolution, the Tunisian revolution, and these guys. The Libyan revolution. Because if there is free democracy, and this is what we all believe in, if there is free democracy in the sense of that people would get to choose their rulers and their representatives, Islam will emerge. Islam is in the heart of the ordinary people. Uh, the percentage, vast majority, you don't have to give speeches or to the country in order to tell people that we have to elect this person. If a person is known that he is religiously committed, he would win any election. Yes. This is the bottom line. It's, so part of the fitra, it's part of the fitra of the exactly. people. SubhanAllah. We're born Muslims, alhamdulillah. And those who accept Islam, uh, they acquire the idea of Islam and they learn it, then they accept it with conviction. They become stronger in Islam than those who were born in Islam. So this is something that makes Muslims distinct from any other uh, followers of other religions. So if 
and inshallah hopefully in the very near future this regime will collapse but I won't be happy if it just collapsed I would like to see the Shah al-Assad being humiliated and disgraced as the Qazafi was humiliated and disgraced or even worse mm. and I can assure you consider it inshallah uh, I'm daydreaming but consider it inshallah a promise yes I promise you inshallah inshallah he will face a worse fate why because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of his names is Al-Adl the just yes all what we see right now is more than enough to give him the worst fate in this life and in the hereafter and this is not a promise by you this is a promise by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course of course yes but I could foresee this I could I have to believe in that yes I have to give myself the hope and the viewers that the end is coming very soon and there will be a light by the end of the tunnel. Allah yes. is testing us and the Syrian people. Allah is testing us how we're we going to react, how we're we going to support these oppressed and, and weak people. Or we have to wait for the United Nations to decide. Or we have to beg Russia and China not to use a veto mm. to stop any uh, uh, decision pertaining uh, Syria. No, we have a task that we have to do despite that the, the international community is doing or not doing anything. Mm. Well, some people say, though, uh, talking about the international community, they say that if the international community uh, is allowed to participate in freeing Syria, then we're bringing the West back to our Muslim lands again. And do you think that the West is not present in every Muslim land or in every Muslim soil? Mm. And uh, we all cheered when the NATO struck and attack the Qadhafi army, which was about to uh, uh, cause a massacre. So on the night before that, they actually uh, destroyed their, uh, their navy completely, and the, all their uh, uh, air fighters and, and so on. They did it for a purpose, but uh, meanwhile it did help uh, the Libyan people to save many of uh, their lives and save uh, a lot of bloodshed, of course. Anyway, I believe Muslims are more than capable to solve this issue on their own without mm. the help of any uh, uh, external party such as the NATO or, or the US or any other foreign country. Imagine the Syrian regime and after one complete year fighting against unarmed men and women and children yes and cannot stop this revolution cannot call it off after one complete year keep in mind they have a constant supply of weapons of fund of men mm -hmm. from two directions from Iran the Shia of Iran the country of Iran and from Hezbollah in Lebanon not to forget the ships which are shipping <coughs> weapons from Syria from Russia yes all the time and still, they cannot suppress this uh, revolution. SubhanAllah. Let's take a phone call from uh, Brother Irshad from Egypt. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, Brother. Uh, okay, I, I was just uh, looking at the uh, program and as uh, Sheikh just now uh, commented between the uh, issue of Alawi religion and the Muslim religion and I am myself a Muslim and I highly appreciate what Huda is doing and I am regularly watching your program. It's amazingly nice and full of uh, knowledge in terms of Islam and all. So I, have, I was having just wondering one question just now. Uh, they were asking that differences between Alawi and the Muslims and all that. I mean, as a Islam, it teaches us to live in a society rather than breaking it and like looking for something which is really going in two different directions. Uh, I mean, just I'm asking, uh, doesn't it create an uh, animosity in the society uh, where we are living as uh, Christians, Muslims, Hindus and all together? <coughs> I myself from uh, India, basically living from Kashmir, we're suffering much, much more than what uh, Syria has been seen. I mean, from past year, we have been uh, suffering from last 40 years now uh, in, uh, in the hands of, I can say, uh, with some uh, communal groups and communal things and all. 
Uh, but uh, it seems to me, do we have to divide the society in terms on the lines of religion? And also, is really a Huda uh, TV right place for this uh, platform for this particular uh, issue? This was just my question. Okay, uh, Irshad, uh, thank you very much. That's all. Uh, you would be so right if we are dividing, but the community is already divided, and the Sunni Muslims are being oppressed in Syria, and this is not new. Uh, last century and a couple uh, decades ago, his father, Bashar's father, Hafiz al-Assad, who was Ali as well, the whole family, massacred and killed 20,000 Muslims. He hmm. buried them under Hamah in front of the international community. Everybody knows that. We studied that in books. This is something been done on regular basis. I remember visiting Syria on 1991 when I was a student uh, and I've been there and have seen how the Sunni Muslims are being oppressed and they cannot practice their religion freely. Me and a few friends from uh, United Arab Emirates, from Tunisia and so on, I was representing Egypt in mm -hmm. the Strip. We were not allowed to pray in Jama'a in public. SubhanAllah, why? Uh, for many reasons, these guys were scared most from religion. Mm. And that's why when they hired the Mufti and the Grand Mufti and these guys, they hired their allies. They hired those who will praise them. They hired those who will maintain them in, in power. But this is for the sake of uh, clarifying things. Alamis are not Muslims. And this is not said today. This is not said today. This is said ever since they emerged, were explaining to people the reality of Alawis. Many people thought Alawis, like the Fatimites, like others, that these guys are some sects of Shia. The Alawis are even denounced by the Shia themselves, mm. by the mother Shia. So it is our role to explain to people who are the Alawis and how these people are in power until today. His father, after killing 20,000 people or more in Hamad, what happened to him? He remained in power. Was a single bullet shot towards the enemies or against the enemies? No. Um, the Golan Heights, which I visited as well, was captured by Israel. Did they make any effort to collect it back, to take it back, to free it from the hands of the enemies? At all. They're only vocal, they keep talking. But the weapons which they have been purchasing and accumulating for four decades are only used against Muslims. SubhanAllah. Uh, inshallah, I want to ask you about the role of the real scholars. Because you said, you know, SubhanAllah, the, the Grand Mufti and, and these people were people that are appointed by the government. I want to ask you about the real scholars of Syria, what their role is, and what the role of the real scholars of the Muslim community all around the world is. But let me take a phone call from Sister Dina first. Sister Dina, assalamu alaikum. <coughs> Go ahead, sister, with your question or comment. I'd like to say first, um, Jazakum Allah Kulli Khair for doing a program like this. Oh, yeah, come um, I just wanted to say, I know a sister from Syria. SubhanAllah, I have not met her. But SubhanAllah, I truly love her for the sake of Allah. And just yesterday, she said a couple of words that really touched my heart. And SubhanAllah, it makes me really sad that we don't know what to do, you know, to help them. So... My question is, um, what can we do to help them, to help our brothers and sisters in Syria? Yes, inshallah. Zakila khairan. Dr. Sah, we'll leave that question to the end. What, yeah, what is our role? We're not sitting here to increase the sorrow and the grief of yes. the viewers because all of us are sad. And we want to take practical steps exactly. also, inshallah. Uh, let's begin with the role of the scholars and then we'll go to the role of, uh, of the average citizen. Uh, what is the role of the scholars mm -hmm. at this time? First of all, we have to distinguish who's a scholar from the fake ones. Because in the name of religion, people were killed and were massacred on both extremes, either by going all the way to the extreme by killing innocent people from other than Muslims, or even by judging Muslims and as kuffar, then blowing themselves amongst them and so on. So if we're talking about the, 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 uh, the midway and the wasatiyah of the Islam, who is a scholar? The scholar is the one who stands and lines up with the oppressed against the oppressor. Mm. The Prophet ﷺ has said in the hadith, 
Ansur ahaka zaliman aw mazluman. You have to support your brother, whether he is an oppressor or being oppressed. The companions of Fazl said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, we all know that because this statement was famous, that phrase was famous and known before Islam, out of prejudice. One would support his family members even if they were wrong. Fight with his clan against others even if his family or his brother or his cousin were wrong. Mm. So they questioned the Prophet ﷺ what, what he meant with that. He said, yes. They said, we all know how to support him if he's been oppressed. But if he's an oppressor, how can we stop him? He said, by, and ta'khud ala day. by stopping him from his oppression. From his oppression. Yes. That if two parties of the believers fighting against each other, and it happens. What about when you see Muslims being fought against by the worst enemies of Islam? Yes. And the whole world is watched. Then it becomes incumbent on every Muslim to rush to help. The means of help are a lot. I want to mention one thing. Hmm. These guys, the Grand Mufti of Syria, and these guys who were proposed as the scholars of Hashem, were quoted, and it's all on video. That when Hafiz al-Assad, the former leader, died, one of whom got up and said that he's in heaven, I could see him in heaven, and so on. I cannot say that to any of the righteous believers. The Prophet ﷺ objected to this statement when uh, Umm Sa'ib said it to a companion, yes. Osman ibn Madhan, he said, and oh. how do you know? How do you know? Hmm. So you say to a killer, to a murderer, to a kafir, that you could see him wandering in heaven. So these guys will have to put a big cross sign on them and not to listen to them at all. Yes. I don't care if they're teaching seerah or fiqh of seerah or principles of jurisprudence or they're scholars in whatever field. But these guys, aqeedah is corrupt. We have to put a big X on them and warn people against them. That's number one. Yes. In order to clean house so that we can start working perfectly fine. Before we continue, let's take a call from Brother Ahmed. Brother Ahmed, Assalamu alaikum. I want, I want to say something uh, for uh, Syrian people that um, we are Egyptians, I'm, I'm from Egypt, and uh, we are Egyptians, we are different from the government. The government may take some, something, uh, some decisions that may be stupid, it may be not right as a Muslim, but nothing we can do, just supplications for... Uh, we can do a lot, Syria. Ahmed. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I think I think we can do a lot, and that's what we're going to talk about. We yeah. have about 30 seconds left uh, in the program, inshallah. Really? SubhanAllah, so time with you is beautiful, uh, and, 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 and it runs uh, out. We should have begun very with quickly. Uh, yes. the, 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 the actions, what we have to do. Yeah, Sister Dina said that, Brother Ahmed, and I'm sure everyone watching us, that's what they Number want to one, do. Number one, the sharpest weapon, qunut, in the five daily prayers. Qunut in the five daily prayers. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help our brothers and sisters and give them victory. Yes. On the, battle field, uh, on the battlefield of Badr, of Uhud, of Al Khandaq, every time the Prophet Sallallahu would face heaven and would invoke Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to give him victory and support him. Hmm. Victory would only come from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, not from the international community. That's one thing that we have to believe, and we have to have a certain belief in that. So, if all the Muslims are making dua in qunut in every salah, as I described in Askuda, this is the sharpest weapon. Second. We have to put pressure on our governments that all the Syrian ambassadors who are the representatives of this tyrant regime have to be expelled. It's too late to withdraw or kick out these uh, uh, ambassadors. We have to isolate them. We have to declare that these guys are not wanted here anymore. Yes. Number three, to support the, uh, the, the, the resistance party. There are different parties, of course, Support them financially, support them by any possible means. If it is needed to send them weapons and purchase weapons to support them, yes, why not? Hmm. Some people, some naive people keep saying that, no, this is an unarmed revolution. Excuse me, and you see your own daughters and children are being massacred in front of your eyes and say this is a peaceful protest for a whole year and the world is watching, you're going to finish them up peacefully? No. We have to arm the revolution in order to be, and I believe if 10% of these guys were armed, they would be able to take out the entire army of Bashar and those who support him from Hezbollah or from Iran. Definitely. Yes. If these guys request us to assist them physically, we'll be more than uh, happy to do so. But as far as I know, they need fund. They need to buy milk for their children. They need to buy food and uh, shelters 
for, for themselves and for their family members. The medical syndicate in Egypt and many other organizations in Muslim countries are collecting funds. Those legitimately approved organizations whom we know that they collect money and they help in the devastated areas in Somalia, in Darfur, in Sudan, in, in Asham, here and there, uh, we have to support them financially. And the zakah can be paid to these guys in advance, inshallah. Mm. We know some merchants who can take the money and send it back, uh, and wire it in a way or another, or deduct it from their accounts and they will be paying that money back to uh, the, the oppressed and uh, those who are devastated there. We can help them financially uh, as well. Hopefully, inshallah, another meeting would like to educate the viewers about the virtues of a sham. Yes, bismillah, inshallah. Barakallahu feek. Thank you so much, Dr. Salah, for, for your insight. Barakallahu feek. And my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I hope it was of benefit to myself and to all of you, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. And we'll see you tomorrow night again here at 10 p.m. Mecca time with another special coverage of our brothers and sisters in Syria. Feel so ashamed holding gun again you holding gun you holding gun crying after crying many people die you holding gun you holding gun promise after lying lying after die you holding gun you holding gun Children now are dying, suffering and crying, holding gun, you holding gun. They control the country. I want to ask you about that. I want to ask you how such a small minority in in uh, in Syria, which is a Muslim majority country, came to power. But let's take Brother Muhammad from Sudan first. Brother Muhammad, salam alaikum. Salam alaikum, Brother Muhammad. It appears that uh, we're having uh, problems with the line. Mm -hmm. Brother Muhammad, please try to give us a call back, inshallah, and uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts uh, about Syria, inshallah. How, how did such a small group of people, who are 10% of the population, come about to be in power for such a long time? Uh, always ask about the interest of uh, other countries, mm -hmm. particularly what is called so-called superpower, uh, in addition to the neighboring countries. If you remember, uh, a very high-ranking officer in the Israeli cabinet said that uh, uh, we have to support al-Assad's regime all the way because if he collapsed, that would be the beginning of the end of the state of Israel. Mm -hmm. When we analyze and examine this statement, it was not made haphazardly. It is absolutely true. Why? He was warning the West, the U.S., Europe, the NATO, that do not make the same mistake as you did by supporting the Egyptian revolution, the Tunisian revolution, and these guys. The Libyan because revolution. Because if there is free democracy, and this is what we all believe in, if there is free democracy in the sense of that people would get to choose their rulers and their representatives, Islam will emerge. Islam is in the heart of the ordinary people. Uh, the person, uh, may Allah's peace and blessing uh, be upon him, and uh, uh, He's one of the great companions of the Prophet وسلم, as we all know, and one of the ten heaven-bound companions and his son-in-law, they made him, after they made him a prophet. The Shia first said that the prophethood was going to Ali, and Angel Gabriel made a mistake, and he handed over to Muhammad in his state. Then these guys, the Ali said, no, 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 Ali is not even a prophet. He was a god. And they said he contained the traits of both, human traits and divine traits. And that's why this is very interesting. You may uh, hear this for the first time. Mm. You know the name of the person who assassinated Ali ibn Abi Talib. May, Allah's be ple may Allah be pleased with him. The, that person's name is Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim. People may say that there is no difference between us and them. They're Muslims too. And they have mosques and they have masjid and they pray. This is not true at all. These guys are not just kuffar. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on him. Judge them as they're more uh, in, in kufr and disbelief, they're worse than the regular kuffar who were born in kufr. Worse than fire worshippers, worse than the enemies of Islam. Because this is what they call it, the enemy within. Uh, then his son, by the name Sulaiman, Muhammad Tawil's son, last century. Uh, he too, he claimed that he was 
uh, a god. He's the Ilah. Both were executed. Then their grandson and so on. These guys, uh, even though they are minority, they are not even 10% of mm. the Syrian population. Mm. So he's a kafir. Yes. Right? Who killed Ali ibn Abi Talib. The Alawis actually praise and celebrate and commemorate the remembrance of Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim. Why? Look at this myth. They say that because he managed to separate al Nasut from al Lahut, because Ali maintained both human traits and divine traits. Mm -hmm. So by killing the human part of him, he was now purely God. God. Mm -hmm. So later on, his descendants and his followers, a person by the name, just last century in, in Syria, a person by the name Muhammad al-Tawil said, well, Ali was God and I'm God too. So he claimed the Lordship. This is the, the evil history of the Alawi sect. Because some people